I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Luther said, When I urge you to go to confession, I am simply urging you to be a Christian. He said that in the large catechism under a section headed for baptism. He treats confession and absolution as the natural outgrowth of being a child of God, being baptized into Jesus. Just as much as being your parent's child will have you saying from time to time, Mom, Dad, I'm sorry. And then hearing them say, I forgive you. It's okay now. So also, the baptized life, as the children of God, will have us saying, I'm sorry. And hearing through Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. We, as God's children, hear that as we are taught in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So as we forgive, we hear for ourselves that little absolution reminding us that as we have been forgiven, so we too will surely forgive and gladly do good to those who sin against us. At the end of the day, we pray that God would forgive us where we have done wrong and then give us a quiet night of rest. We can ponder and meditate in our hearts, in our minds, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest what the scriptures say of God's love for us in Jesus, and in that take great assurance that my sins are forgiven, that your sins are forgiven. But as the baptized, as children of our Heavenly Father in Jesus, there are times when we just need to cry out, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And hear Jesus say in return, I forgive you all your sins. That's what confession and absolution are for. And that's why Luther said, when I am urging you to that, to individual confession with the pastor and the hearing of forgiveness or the absolution from the pastor, I'm just urging you to be a Christian, to do what kids do. We say, I'm sorry. And then we hear forgiveness. We can hear that in the home from a parent or from a sibling or from a friend. But there are times when we need to hear that from Jesus in and through what we call his office of the ministry. We'll get more into that when we talk about the office of the keys and that authority which Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners or retaining the sins of those who do not repent. You know that there are times when you check your temperature and you're not feeling quite right. And mom can take care of that, or you can take care of that yourself. Take a little medicine, get a little sleep, make sure you take care of yourself, and your body will repair itself. There are many things that we don't need to go to the doctor for. But then there's that oh, pain that just won't go away. There's that something going on in me that has me bothered. That's when God gives us this wonderful gift of confession and absolution, where we go to the pastor and confess our sins, and it is the voice of Jesus that we hear through him saying, I forgive you. Last week we talked about Simon Birch and his crying to the heavens, I'm sorry. He needed to hear something in return. Something authoritative. 
something sure. In the opening of this video, you saw another clip from a different movie called The Mission. In that movie, a particular man had done grievous, horrible things to an indigenous people, a tribe. And he got to the point of realizing the sin of that, the harm and the hurt that he had caused others. Now, in the movie, we see him given penance. He's a Roman Catholic, and so he's given penance to do. He has to carry this huge bundle, this burden, which is the, to represent the weight of his sin, all the way up a mountain. And it's not easy. Now, as Lutheran Christians, we don't talk about penance. We don't talk about God's forgiveness as if it were connected to what we may do. But always we speak of God's forgiveness connected to what Christ has done. He is the one who suffered and did all the work for your salvation, for the forgiveness of your sins. You don't have to do something for that. Though when we come truly sorry, as we may do to our parents, we will, by God's grace, want to do better. And in the love and the mercy and the forgiveness of mom and dad, we will. They won't tell us, now go clean up your room and you'll be forgiven. But we may go clean up our room because we are forgiven. Because mom said, I forgive you. Or dad said, I forgive you. And we, in that love, want to do better. As Christians, we rightly want to do better. And in fact, love would have us showing our neighbor, whether it's mom or whether it's dad or whether it's our fellow Christians, that we in fact are sorry. And now in the forgiveness of sins won for us by Jesus, we do want to do better. The person who stole may give that back. The person who has harmed another may speak to that person, apologize, make things right again. That's love that we owe others. My sin, your sin, these are never simply between us and God. When we've done something, someone suffers. Even if it's only me, and I feel guilty, and I feel bad, and I feel blue or down in the dumps because, oh, I did it again. Other people will be affected by that. Hmm, you don't seem as happy today. Anything wrong? No. But the truth is, yes, my sins are not just between me and God. Maybe I feel guilty enough to not even feel like coming to church. People are going to look at me. They know what I did. They can see the evidence of it. Maybe I got a little too happy at a party last night and went out with my friends and made a bad decision. And all of a sudden, those blue lights are flashing behind me. This is just an example, by the way. It didn't really happen to me. But then all of a sudden, I'm in the papers. My name is. Maybe my picture, too. People can see that I'm a sinner. And in such situations, we might feel so ashamed, so guilt-ridden, that we stay away from God's house. In those situations, maybe friends will tell us, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. Though our conscience, if we are Christian, will tell us, yeah, it is a big deal. God's word says it's a big deal. I can feel it's a big deal. What to do? God has given you a pastor who will hear your confession, and will keep that to himself. Oh, it may be in the paper, or it may not. But it's not coming out of his mouth again. He's under orders 
from God as a bearer of the office of Christ's ministry. He's got a collar on, a dog collar. He's chained to the will and the work of Christ. To be a servant, not to spread sin around, but to cover it with Jesus. To speak what Jesus says to that sin. I forgive you. And then as God has said, I will put your sins as far from you as the east is from the west, and I will remember your sins no more. So that sin which the pastor has absolved is buried in the waters of your baptism, in the wounds of Jesus Christ, in the depths of the sea, as the scriptures say, in the word that Christ spoke from the cross. It's finished. To tell us die. It's done. Paid for. And we won't bring this up again. You and I may speak to our friends about what we have done, and sometimes loose lips can repeat what ears have heard. The pastor is under orders as a minister of Christ not to speak. And he can be removed from office if he repeats the sins that have been confessed to him. His job is to cover. And so that is what he does. His job is to release, which is what forgiveness means. In that other clip from the movie The Mission, despite the problems of penance, gives a great image of what absolution or forgiveness is. At the top of that mountain, one of those people that that man had done such harm to comes up with a knife. He has the right to take a life, but instead uses the knife to cut the burden away. He cuts the rope and that burden falls into the water below. Now you and I hurt and harm our neighbor all the time. We sin against each other, even against ourselves. But Jesus says, whatever you do to the least of these, my brethren, you're doing it to me. And so no matter who you've sinned against, ultimately you've sinned against Jesus. Against God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Against the name you bear. And so it is God's forgiveness that you always need. You can hear that through your mom and your dad, through your brother or sister, your neighbor, your friend. In the pastor you are hearing Christ himself. Cut that burden away. Release you as the one whom you have sinned against, but who has died your death and now has risen again to breathe out to his apostles saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. And we'll get more to that in the next video. But for now, understand that what you are hearing in the pastor's absolution is Christ's own voice setting you free. And the pastor is bound not to repeat what Christ has said is buried in his wounds, in his blood, in his word of absolution. So if you're feeling guilty, if you're feeling ashamed, if you're feeling this, oh, it's not going away. In fact, it's interfering with my relationship to others, my relationship to my pastor and the church. I don't even want to go to church. I just feel so bad. Take that to the doctor. Take that to your pastor, who is placed as a physician of your soul to speak in Christ's behalf. If you're having trouble with a diagnosis, he will have words of God to speak to the situation and guide you through. If you're being tempted to blame somebody else and not really make confession of your sin, well, my brother did this and so I did that, 
leave your brother out of this. This is about you and your sin. He will instruct you and teach you and guide you along the way to make the honest confession that Simon Birch did in that movie clip. I'm sorry. I killed my best friend's mom. Yeah, it was an accident, but that doesn't matter. I did it, and I'm sorry. And when we come confessing the sins we know and feel in our hearts, the pastor's job is this. I forgive you all your sins. And that settles it, according to Jesus. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. When you do go to the pastor for confession and absolution, what are the sins that you ought to be mindful of? How do you go about your examination for the confession of sins for the sake of hearing Christ's holy absolution. Consider your place in life according to the Ten Commandments. Are you a father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, or worker? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you been hot-tempered, rude, or quarrelsome? Have you hurt someone by your words or deeds? Have you stolen, been negligent, wasted anything, or done any harm? We have differing vocations or callings. You're a child, a daughter or a son. You may be a brother or a sister, a niece, a nephew, a cousin, an aunt or an uncle. Right now, you are students. You are Christians bearing the name of Jesus. All of those are vocations or callings. They are who God has given you to be. How are you doing in each of those? How am I being as a son towards my parents? Have I made them mad? How am I being as a daughter or as a brother or a sister? Am I getting along with the members of my family or not? How am I doing as a student, making my teachers and my parents proud or being difficult? There are a lot of different things you are that I am, and we can reflect on how we are doing those. We can use the commandments. Do I have other gods than God? That is, am I fearing, loving, and trusting in something other than God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Am I letting things get in the way of my relationship with Christ? Am I focused on so many earthly things that I barely have time or even a desire to spend time in the house of God, hearing and receiving His Word, and sacrament? Am I calling on God's name in every trouble, pray, praising and giving thanks, or am I opening up my mouth and just unloading on someone because I'm in a bad mood? That neighbor that I'm so angry with is an occasion for me to thank God for slowing me down and teaching me. It's time to pray. Time to call upon your name, O Lord, to teach me love toward others as you love me. Am I despising God's word by not holding it sacred or gladly hearing and learning it? Am I absenting myself from the divine service? Have I got a Bible at home that I hardly ever open? Am I glad to learn the faith that the pastor's teaching me or that my parents are instructing me on in the home? Or am I thinking, I'd rather be playing video games or watching some TV? Am I honoring my parents? Am I honoring myself and my neighbor in his or her body? Am I taking care of myself and others? 
Am I using my body in a chaste and decent way, a sexually pure way? Or am I doing things that are making me feel bad or guilty, or even making someone else feel the same? Am I taking what isn't mine, stealing, even if it is taking someone's time? Am I explaining everything in the kindest way, or am I thinking the worst of someone? I know that pastor may have said a thing or two from time to time that may upset me, but did he mean to? Did he mean it in the way I felt? What a great time for confession and absolution. And yes, it can start off like this. I confess that I've been angry with my pastor, or I've been angry with my parents. We can say, I've been upset with someone. I've been upset with you. <laughs> and to that, Christ's voice should be heard. I forgive you. There now. That settles things, doesn't it? Not what you and I say, not what you and I feel, but what Jesus Christ himself has spoken. Try doing that on a Sunday morning. It's not that easy. Though in past times, the early church pretty much dealt with sins and God's forgiveness in such fashion. As if we're family. As if God's love transcends ours or our lack of love. As if he's got more forgiveness than you and I've got sins. And so we can be honest about those sins trusting in God's mercy, to speak for Jesus' sake, to hear Christ himself declaring, I forgive you all of your sins. In Jesus' name, amen.